experienced any of the following. Allergies, anemia, bloating, chronic fatigue, constipation, depressed immune function, diarrhea, eczema, enlarged lymph glands, excessive hunger, fever, flu symptoms, gas, grinding your teeth at night, hives, irritable bowel syndrome, irritability, jaundice, joint and muscle aches or pain, nervousness, rashes, reddened eyes, sleep disturbances, weight gain, weight loss. Health experts have been telling us for years that 90% of all diseases start in our colon and that most of us suffer from some degree of constipation. We regularly deworm our pets, but we never consider we might also have parasites and worms living inside us. It's time to learn about the health challenges that originated our colon and develop due to the parasites that infest us. Living in North America is no protection against parasitic infection. Symptoms of parasitic infestation may include constipation, weight loss, weight gain, excessive hunger, extreme nervousness and irritability, diarrhea, gas and bloating, irritable bowel syndrome, joint and muscle pain, anemia, and allergies. Parasites reproduce quickly and can cause allergies by secreting toxic wastes to which the body reacts. Parasites can also cause malnutrition by stealing nutrients the body needs for vital cellular repair and health. Parasites can even cause death. The World Health Organization estimates that one quarter of the world's population suffers from chronic intestinal parasitic infections which have insidious effects on growth, nutrition, and cognitive function in children. Parasites can infect virtually every part of the human body. Estimates indicate approximately 55 million children in North America are infected with worms, and that's in human beings. Health problems from parasites are truly a global problem. Of the deaths worldwide due to communicable diseases, about 80% are due to parasite infections and parasitic diseases. Snail fever kills approximately 200,000 people every year. The World Health recently estimated that footworms alone killed 90,000 people. The subject of parasites isn't one you'd likely discuss at dinner, but the dinner table is probably where most parasitic infections begin. Parasites and worms thrive in animals and consequently are found in many meat products. However, being a vegetarian or vegan doesn't exempt you from exposure. Parasites exist on raw, unwashed, or poorly cleaned fruit and vegetables. Hundreds of parasites live in all types of meat. Beef, for example, harbors a species of tapeworm which can grow to as long as 25 feet in human intestines. Contrary to popular belief, even well-cooked pork harbors viable trichinella worms and a tapeworm that may infiltrate human brain and muscle tissue. The Journal of the American Academy of Physician Assistants issued this statement. House pets offer affection, companionship, and trust, but they also are reservoirs for infectious agents transmissible to human beings. Crypto's meridian, affectionately referred to as crypto, causes an epidemic of gastrointestinal illnesses, including diarrhea and nausea in over 50,000 citizens of Milwaukee. And parasites can live an astonishingly long time. More than 50 years later, ex-servicemen who contracted certain parasites in the South Pacific or Asia during World War II are still infected. According to the book Foundation of Parasitology, humans are hosts to more than 100 kinds of parasites, not counting viruses, bacteria, and fungi. It is unusual to find a domestic animal which isn't carrying at least one species of parasite, and often the parasites themselves are the hosts to further parasites. At this point, a couple of things must now be clear to you. First, the chances are very high that you have one or more parasites living inside you. Second, the parasites you probably have are a major threat to your health and well-being. In a moment, we will discuss some important information you need to know about getting rid of your parasites. But first, we need to talk about that other topic, which, like parasites, is rarely considered polite dinner conversation. That's your colon. Not only is the colon the source of many of our illnesses, it is also the area where most of our parasites initially settle and reproduce. The colon is the compost heap where these parasites nest, feed, and lay their eggs. Every time you eat, you put food into your digestive system. There are only three things that can happen to that food. One, your body can use part of it for fuel and nutrition. 
two, the leftover materials can be eliminated. Or three, it can stay inside your digestive system. Every scrap of food that isn't either used up or eliminated by your body sits somewhere in your digestive system. The majority of it stays in your colon. When this happens, a minute layer of refuse material coats the wall of your colon, like layers of paint. Over time, each additional layer of uneliminated refuse covers the previous one. And exactly what is that material? It's uneliminated fecal matter. One of the functions of your colon is to draw whatever remaining nutrients it can from material passing through it. However, when your colon is coated with a layer of toxic, compacted fecal matter, what gets soaked up with the nutrients? You guessed it, toxins. Toxins your digestive system was supposed to eliminate. The process is called auto-intoxication or self-poisoning. You may be unwittingly poisoning yourself with the toxins accumulated in your colon. What kind of health problems does auto-intoxication present? Most naturopaths believe the majority of symptoms we attribute to illness are actually your body's reaction to toxins, toxins which come from your colon. In the United States alone, 60 to 70 million people are affected by digestive diseases, and 10 million people are hospitalized for digestive diseases annually, which amounts to 13% of all hospitalizations. For most of us, it is not a question of whether or not we have parasites, but rather what parasites we do have. The good news is you can take charge of your health and reverse or eliminate the effects of the global village and poor nutritional habits.